In today's video from Father and Son Investing, we're going to do the January 2024 Treasury Bill Update. Not notes or bonds, just Treasury Bills for this video. We're going to talk about the current state of Treasury Bills and what might be the outlook for 2024. Then we're going to talk about the T-Bill and Chill strategy. Is that still viable right now or should you be moving on to something else? Lastly, we'll talk about some potential alternatives to Treasury Bills right now. So let's get started. If you've been paying attention to Treasury bill yields, you will know that they have come down significantly since November 1st, which you can see here in the green line. The current rate as of January 2nd, 2024 is there in the blue line. What you'll notice is that for the one month and two month, the yields really haven't changed significantly during that interim. Once we get into the three month, four month, six month, and 12 month, you'll see that the yields are changing. So what is it that drove this change? Well, certainly the surge in bond prices based upon the anticipation that the Fed will be cutting its rates during 2024. With each little bit of data that comes in, including the recent GDP report that came in less than expected for the third quarter, these bond yields have been taking a little bit of a hit, meaning that bond prices are rising. That leads us to wonder what the outlook is for 2024 when it comes to Treasury bill yields. The answer to that depends upon what the Fed sets their funds rate at. This is from the CME Watch Tool. It's commonly used to predict what the Fed will be doing. So looking at January 2024, the prediction is that the Fed will hold rates the same. However, moving on to March, there is a 70% chance, and the market uses this to price in whether the Fed is changing things ahead of time, they price that in ahead of time. 70% chance, according to the CME Watch tool, that the Fed will lower rates at their meeting in March. And then moving on through the year, you'll see that they predict the Fed continuing to lower rates such that 54% chance that will be down to the 425 to 450 basis points. However, when it comes to predictions, I would say that they can kind of be all over the map. Here's predictions from the JP Morgan website. We've got predictions from Morningstar. They're predicting six interest rate cuts in 2024. The Fed, of course, in their latest meeting is anticipating three interest rate cuts. And then there's this take from Kiplinger. They discuss the potential effect of the 2020-2024 elections on when the Fed might be making their interest rate cuts. They don't show an interest rate cut until May suggesting that the Fed wants to make sure that inflation is controlled. They don't want to decrease the rate too soon and reignite inflation. And it talks about how they don't want to be a political punching bag here. So they suggest that the Fed won't make that third of the interest rate cuts until after the November 2024 election. Now let's turn our attention to the T-bill and chill strategy. This is an article in Morningstar from December 2023. The headline, Should You T-bill and Chill? The author goes on to talk about the pros and cons of continuing the T-bill and chill strategy versus potentially moving on to something else, and she gives her reasons here. Her number one reason for maintaining the T-bill and chill strategy would be that if interest rates continue to stay the same, and we've seen how, at least according to Kiplinger, that might not change until out into May of 2024. One other reason that I see to continue the T-bill and chill strategy, though, would be that if you are strictly just interested in safety, you want an investment that is almost entirely safe, that is U.S. government treasuries. She goes on to talk about the cons here. Uh, the first one mentioned has to do with taxes. Of course, treasury bills are taxed at whatever your current tax rate is. There's no advantage when it comes to federal taxes to having treasury bills. So potentially one could turn their attention to municipal bonds, which are taxed differently. Another interesting reason that she reminds us of is when it comes to inflation risk, keeping your money in cash or cash alternatives like treasury bills really doesn't amount to much when it comes to beating inflation in the long run. She goes on to describe rolling 36-month periods from 1954 to October of 2023, and that cash or its alternatives such as treasury bills edged out inflation by an annualized 0.64%. So keeping your money in cash barely beats inflation in the long run. 
Of course, there is always the reinvestment risk. That is that you might have a treasury bill that currently is yielding, say, 4.8% for a 12-month treasury bill. But when that treasury bill matures in 12 months, you may be down to something like 4% or even in the 3 to 4% range. Thus, that is the reinvestment risk that when you go to reinvest in the future, you won't be able to get the same rate. The last con that she discusses has to do with opportunity cost. There are a number of really good graphs that the author presents here in this article. I won't go into all of them, but I will leave a link to this article down below. When we look at opportunity costs, we're essentially looking at what you would have missed if you keep your money in cash versus investing it in the market. So what then would be my plan when it comes to treasury bills for January of 2024? I think if you don't need your money for six months or less, well then go ahead and purchasing a corresponding treasury bill makes sense. However, if you can go longer, if you can wait a year to get your money back, well, I think there are better alternatives. When we look here at the current yield on the 52-week treasury bill, it's only 4.8%. And there certainly are other alternatives which can yield you more. The best of those alternatives, in my opinion, might be a one-year CD. You can easily get rates up in the 5 to 5.5%, 5 .5%, and you potentially could find some still at 6%. Another alternative could be corporate bonds. If you're not familiar with those, companies will sell a bond to finance their business, similar to the way that the U.S. government sells a bond. However, because they are not U.S. treasuries, they typically will yield just slightly more, or depending on how low you want to go on that investment grade, even significantly more than what a U.S. Treasury will be yielding. We did a video not too long ago about corporate bonds. If you're interested in these, then I would encourage you to go back and watch that video. There can be a number of other alternatives, but one other suggestion could be looking into preferred stocks. These are sort of a hybrid between bonds and regular stocks. And oftentimes these will have certain conditions where the company is required to pay regardless. If they miss a payment, they're still required to make up that payment in the future. So this could be one other potential place that you could look for better yields than treasury bills. All right, that's going to do it for today's January 2024 Treasury Bill update. If you have comments, please leave those down below. I'd love to hear what your comments are. Until next time, enjoy your investing.